What's going on guys, welcome to Rob's house. We got a little bit of a different project today. Normally you see me doing stuff to my cars to either uh, improve the aesthetics of the car, like the looks, or to improve the performance of the car. Today we're actually doing a creature comfort mod and we've done some interior stuff before, but today we're actually completely revamping my subwoofer setup in the Mustang. So in the Mustang, I've actually had these two 12 inch Alpine S-type subs that I added to the factory uh, sound system. And uh, the factory sound system in this car is actually excellent. And I really think that these subwoofers complement it very well. The problem was the amp that I originally had just went bad. So I tossed it, I got a new one. I'll show you that one in a minute. But I wanted to actually do a proper install this time. So before I kind of had my amp sort of just taped down in the spare tire well, but I didn't really have it mounted super cleanly. And we're also gonna mount down the um, uh, fuel pump booster for the, uh, the phase two supercharger kit, which also was originally, you can see some of the remnants of the tape in there. Um, but we're gonna do an install the correct way today. Don't mind all the wires. I've already run everything. I've already tested the amplifier. I know everything works. Now we're gonna clean it all up and actually finish this install. So here is, don't mind my mess of a workbench right now, but here is my new Down For Sound JP8 subwoofer amplifier. This thing's really cool because it doesn't just have a low pass filter uh, like all subwoofer amps have, which basically like under that, whatever this frequency is set at, everything under that gets sent to the sub, but everything above it gets filtered out. It also has a subsonic filter. So there are some frequencies that even for your subwoofer are too low for it to produce. So let's say your subwoofer has a frequency response response range of 25 hertz to 200, let's say, I don't know, you know, whatever. Uh, what the subsonic filter lets you do is you can actually set the subsonic filter to 25 hertz because your speaker actually can't respond to signal uh, below that properly, it'll actually filter it out. So you actually get, you, you get your low pass and your subsonic filter is basically a high pass and you can just you can just have that sweet spot sent to your subs. It really cleans the tone of the, of, of the sub up a lot. And like I said, I've already installed this and tested it. My subs sound amazing with this amp. I had a Pioneer amp before this, this amp is way better. Under one ohm load, which is what I have my speakers wired to, this produces, I think it was 800 watt RMS-ish, something like that, which is the same as what my Pioneer amp was. But some people have real world tested it and, and got and, and got more. Down for sounds, RMS ratings are worst case scenario. So you'll never get lower than that. It also has a really nice remote that I mounted like on the, on the underside of my dash kind of in the car. And it has an LED readout. It tells you the battery voltage. And the way it works is it actually, it's not a base boost knob, it's a gain knob, which is fantastic because your gain setting, depending upon what type of music you're listen to, listening to, you might want more or less gain depending upon how strong the uh, sub bass signal is in that particular, uh, really for each individual song. But you'll really notice the difference if you're like, I listen to metal and I also like to listen to hip hop or trap or, or, or EDM style music too. Well, hip hop or EDM music has a lot of bass typically in the master, whereas metal doesn't actually have as much sub bass. So I like to turn the gain up a little bit when I listen to metal to get that nice punchy kick drum coming through my subs. But normally on amps, you can only use bass boost and I don't actually want a bass boost. I want to actually control the gain on my amp. So you can see here, I have bass boost set to zero. I have my gain set as high as I can for metal music where I will not clip. And the reason that I do that is because then with the knob, I can actually turn it down if I'm listening to, to rap music or, or something with more heavy bass lines, right? What's cool is the amp has a clip light on it and actually the remote has a clip light on it. So even if I'm just in my car and I'm like, hey, I wanna listen to some EDM, I can turn it up and if I start seeing that clip light gone, I can back off the gain so I make sure I don't damage my speaker. So this amp is really cool. It's really full featured. My old amp didn't even have a clip light. It's actually really hard to set up an amp properly without a clip light because you actually just don't know if you're clipping or not. So, uh, and, and that can damage the speaker. Basically what happens when you clip is the speaker is trying to move both forward and backward at the same time. And it sounds like crap, obviously, and it can also damage the speaker. So we don't want that. Uh, so that's pretty cool that we have a clip light in addition to our protect light. Obviously the protect light tells you that the amp is shutting off for some reason, whether it be it's too hot or it's malfunctioning for some reason. Of course it has a power light on here. That's pretty much it and then here's the input this is where rcas actually come in and then on the other side of the amp of course we have our typical speaker outputs our 12 volt power our remote to turn the amp on and off and our ground now all of that is run all that's set up in the car i already had that all set up uh, from my previous amp i actually went up 
on the wiring gauge. So I did replace uh, my power on ground wires and my speaker wires recently, but that's really the only thing that I did. So today, all we're gonna do is actually clean up this install. We're gonna mount everything to a board. Now, I've went ahead and already kind of cut it. So I have this, I have this ABS plastic board that I've already cut in such a way that it will fit in my spare tire, tire well. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually drill the center mounting holes. I'm gonna actually use the factory mounting point, the factory mounting bracket for the spare tire. There's like a foam thing with a like a screw cap you know pretty much tons of cars have this in their spare tire spare tire well um in this car it has like a, an air compressor and like the jack and whatever that sits in it so i'm going to mount uh, i'm going to use two screws here to hold the board in place but if you notice obviously this thing's elevated right so we're going to have some space and now the abs plastic is strong but it's going to have a lot of weight on it so we're going to have to come up with a solution to help bear that load, the, the weight that's distributed across the board on the edges, because we're gonna have a lot of leverage, right? If it's mounted in the center and we've got the amp kind of on the side, it's gonna sort of sag and bend the plastic. It might even break it, right? So this plastic is not that thick, right? It's like quarter of an inch thick, pretty sturdy. I mean, but it does flex a little bit. So I was like, I need some like rubber, like feet that I can put kind of on the edges. And as I was thinking about it, I was like, I know exactly what I could use. Kind of not the first thing you would think of, but I was like, hockey pucks. Hockey pucks are literally perfect. This will be like the perfect height for around the middle and I can stack two of them around the edges where it gets really deep. It's dense rubber, so it's not going to, uh, it, you know, it's better than using like foam, for example. You'll still have like sagging problems. Hockey pucks, get them at literally any sporting goods store. So I just went to one of my local sporting goods store and picked up a bunch of hockey pucks. And that's what I'm gonna use after we mount the board. Uh, I figure what we'll do is we'll just um, put some 3M double-sided tape on them, right? And stick them underneath the board. And then you basically have rubber feet on the board. And I think that should work. That should hold it in place well, uh, kind of help support the weight. We're gonna have to do, a, uh, we're gonna have to drill a couple holes. We're gonna have to first put the board actually in the car, drill those center mounting holes. And then what I'll do is I'll actually lay the amp and the fuel pump booster uh, actually on the board. And we can use a center punch just to make some, some marks where we wanna drill some additional holes for the screws to actually mount our devices onto them. Uh, so I also got these uh, wall hole saws uh, that, you know, typically you would use this to drill a hole through like drywall or, or something else like that. But the reason that I got this was because once I have my devices actually laid out on the board, what I want to do is drill some holes so that we can feed the wires up from underneath, connect them obviously, and make sure that the wires aren't flopping around while I'm driving or anything. Just everything is just, you know, really mounted down, secured and, kind of isn't going anywhere. So I'm going to start sort of measuring this stuff out and actually drilling some of these holes and I will report back when I actually have my devices mounted and my holes drilled. So I'll be right back. All right guys, so just wrapping up here. Uh, basically, here's kind of what the setup's gonna look like. I had a bunch of extra wire that I zip tied together and just kind of duct taped down here. It's gonna be underneath the board so you won't see it. And then I stacked two hockey pucks in each corner and it's, it's hilariously, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically the perfect height. It basically lines up totally evenly with this. Um, I drilled a couple holes. We got our amp over here mounted to this board. I tried to use nut certs on this board, but I wasn't having any success with them. So I ended up just using, uh, you know, I had the bolts and then backing nuts with washers on each side to mount the amp. So the amp is definitely attached now. And I put some holes on each side where I can feed the wires through. We should pretty much be good to go. I was thinking I was gonna need somewhere to zip tie the wires down, but I actually don't think I'll need that because I duct tape the wires to the bottom of the spare wheel well. I think we should be good as is. So I'm just gonna put this in the car, uh, bolt it down, and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. All right guys, I have wrapped up the install here. Nice and neat. Uh, it's worth noting that this all gets hidden under uh, this guy here. So you won't see any of this stuff. And before you couldn't see any of this stuff in the trunk anyway, but vibration kills electronics. So I wanted to actually mount them to a board nicely. The, uh, the stat, you can actually see one of the hockey puck stacks here, but it does a great job, like really keeping this whole thing stable. So like, no matter how hard I'm driving the car, there's some under here. There's some under here too. No matter how hard I'm driving the car, if I hit a big bump or if I'm like hammering it or whatever, uh, 
none of this stuff's gonna move around. So that's really like the most important thing. Pretty happy with how it turned out. So I'm gonna button everything up and then I'll show you guys what it looks like uh, in the end, just with everything reinstalled. All right guys, it's all buttoned up, all done. Obviously in the trunk, you can't see anything normally. Kind of lift up the rug here. You can actually see the install underneath. Overall, I'm pretty happy with her, how it turned out. It's definitely neater now. Uh, everything is bolted down, secure. Just looks a lot more professional, I think. So anyway, as usual, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this video is entertaining. And I'll see you guys next time.